All right, guys, quick video for how to find real solutions using graphing. Um, I'm gonna be using Desmos as my graphing calculator tool, and I'm only gonna do one example on this one. Um, I'm working in a Algebra 2 textbook, page 301, and I'm gonna be looking at question number 25. This is primarily for my students, and while it's out there for everybody else, it's not really something that anyone else will probably ever watch. Why, uh, so my equation is x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x is negative 10, and I'm working on real solutions. Now, what I observe about this right off the bat is that there should be three solutions to this thing. Um, they may not all be real. Um, we're not really there yet to determine what is and isn't real, so we're gonna use graphing to help us out. And what I'm gonna do is two different techniques. So first technique, I gotta be honest, is the probably the easiest one, um, is just typing it in exactly as is, and then graphing it. So let's go ahead and type it in exactly as is and graph it and see what happens, right? You might wonder why we even need a second technique then. So I'm going to do x cubed minus 4x squared. So minus 4x squared minus 7x equals negative 10. And what I should be looking for here um, are my y-intercepts sorry, my x-intercepts, so my first x-intercept, if it'll let me do it, uh, looks like, well, I can see it. I'm trying to tap on it, it's not working, but I can see that x is negative two on the left. It looks like the middle one is x is positive one, and on the right-hand side, exactly between four and six is a five. I'm still not really clear why I can't tap on them, but I don't know, I can't tap on them for some reason. All right, so we already have our solutions. So then, well, what happens if we try to solve it a different way? Let's go ahead and minimize this for now. And let's deal with it the second way, right? The second way would be more like a systems of equations problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this original problem and I'm gonna take the left-hand chunk and I'm gonna branch it, well, let's, let's duplicate this. Let's branch it off and set one equation, y equals that left-hand chunk. And then let's take the right-hand chunk, duplicate, and set that as y equals and graph those two and look for where they touch. So this is kind of a neat one. Um, let's just do it for fun here and see if, I sure hope we get the same thing. So let's clear this out. Let's graph y equals x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x. And I'll make a second equation y equals negative 10. Um, now what I should see if all goes well, is I should see two lines. Here we go. And what I'm looking for in each one of these, I'm looking for a spot where, oh, I know why they wouldn't show me the intersection because I only had one line drawn. So now I have the blue and my green line. And if I tap on it, I should be able to see, there we go. So the first example answer is X is negative two. There was the negative two from before. The second one is positive one. And the third one is positive five, right? So we're looking at the X values only. We're not really looking at the Y values as much. We're just looking at the X values. So um, that is a second way to solve and find real solutions by graphing. I expected to have three solutions. I saw three different things. Um, actually, I should probably go back to, uh, well, I'm just gonna imagine, uh, remembering that first equation, remember how my line touched at three separate spots. So those are my three real solutions. Um, a heads up that you won't always see all your answers. Um, you're simply looking for the ones where they touch or where the curved line touches your x-axis. That's it on how to graph and find real solutions of polynomials.